Hey everyone! A common question we're getting about our range versus melee top guides is, why should we push his range if that's what the melee champion wants us to do? We can easily see how this is confusing, so we're going to clear that up in this video by analyzing a gameplay of TL Impact playing Urgot vs Jax. So stick around to the end as we'll finally break down this paradox where both players want the same thing. Anyways, let's break down the matchup and create some game plans before getting into the actual gameplay. Urgot is a ranged AD Bruiser versus Jax, a melee AD Bruiser. Since Urgot has the range advantage, he wins through poke and burst trades, where Jax will win extended trades. Also, Urgot has control of the wave, which is always the case in range versus melee. Urgot's game plan is going to look like this. Mission 1, build a slow push. To build a slow push, the only thing Impact has to do is to get the push advantage, which is easy as a ranged champion, then last hit the wave as it stacks up and crashes on the tower. And with that slow push, Jax can't fight Urgot without taking too much damage from minions. Mission 2, harass when they go for CS. A staple mission for range versus melee, Urgot wants to poke Jax with autos or his Q as much as he can when Jax goes for a last hit. And mission 3, keep pressuring this way to force solo kills, turret plating, or bad recalls. After doing this enough, Jax should get low enough that he overstays, takes a bad recall, or has to give up tower plating gold since he can't defend it. And now for Jax's game plan, Mission 1, let the wave push. Jax has less wave clear than Urgot and shouldn't be able to do anything early on without taking too much harass, so he wants to let the wave push to him. Mission 2, avoid taking too much harass for CS. Jax knows Urgot is going to poke him every time he goes for last hit, so he needs to choose what CS he's going to get carefully to avoid getting poked down. And mission 3, look for all in windows. Jax wins extended trades, so naturally he wants to all in. But to do that, it will require a positional mistake from Urgot, since Jax loses this matchup if both players play perfectly. Alright, now let's get into the gameplay. As laning starts, Impact gets the lane a lot earlier than Jax because of an early jungle skirmish. This won't affect the lane that much, just because it's going to play out the same way even if they both got here at the same time, but Jax will be a few minions behind in experience. Jax is finally in lane now though, and both of them start mission 1. Impact has a small minion advantage to start a slow push, and Jax has no choice but to let the lane push to him anyway. Impact hits level 2 first as expected, so he walks towards Jax to pressure him. This seems small, but it's actually something we see low elo players struggle with constantly throughout our reviews. Standing this far up makes it so if Jax wants to walk up for a last hit, he's going to take damage as he's walking up for it, and as he's walking back. But if Impact was back at his own range minions, he wouldn't be in range to harass Jax until he was already at the minion. So positioning this way, pressures Jax into not even trying to go for these few last hits. Then when Impact moves back, Jax thinks he's safe to grab this one, so he walks up, but takes some harass for it. Impact couldn't pressure that as much as he wanted to, because he would have missed one of his own last hits to do it. And like we always say, in terms of priority, CS over harass pretty much every time. Right after that, Jax grabs a smart last hit knowing that Urgot Q is down, so he can only hit him with an auto attack. After Impact autos him, he takes minion aggro, then drops it using the brush. This is another simple concept that we see many players not utilize enough in lower ranks. A lot of the time, they go for harass, then walk back in the direction of their tower instead of in the brush, so just a reminder, this works way better. Impact continues mission 2 and pokes Jax with Q when he walks up for this one. He hits level 3, and we can see the wave starting to stack up nicely now for mission 1 since he's been last hitting this whole time. But before the wave crashes on the tower, Impact makes sure to punish Jax for this cannon minion. After crashing the wave, he wants to put a ward down since we saw Kha'Zix start as red buff, so he should be near top now. How do we know this? Well if you haven't learned how to track the jungler, one of the easiest ways to have a general idea of where they could be is by knowing where they started and looking at your own jungler. For example, in this game, Kha'Zix started red so he'll clear his bot side jungle, then his top side. Nidalee started top side, so she's now finishing her bot camps and looking to gank. So odds are, Kha'Zix also finished and is looking to gank as well. So he heads into river and notices the scuttle crab was taken by Kha'Zix, which had to have been in the last 30 seconds. So Impact puts down a really smart ward in his own tri brush to cover behind him since Kha'Zix should be done clearing his top camps and could be counter jungling or wrapping around the back for a gank. When he gets back to lane, he works on mission 2 to harass Jax whenever he goes for last hit under tower. 
All right, we're gonna stop here and break this down because this is where we really see the difference between a pro player and everyone else. After Impact harassed Jax for all the CS under tower, he immediately backed up to here. Why do you think he does this? If you've seen one of our melee versus range guys before, this is a situation we talk about all the time. There are two main reasons. First, look at the wave. Since the big wave he pushed in was cleared by the tower, he no longer has the minion advantage to help him if Jax all ins. And this is a very common window for melee champions to look for all ins if the range champion gets greedy with their positioning. So if Impact walked up to try to pressure Jax when he went to last hit these three range minions, Jax would go for mission three and all in 100%. So he stays out of range of Jax jump completely. This concept should help clear things up for those of you having questions about the game plans as both of their game plans work just at different times. And it's always up to the melee champion to punish the range one when they are this far up in the lane and positioned incorrectly. And the second reason is that he knows Kha'Zix is topside. If Kha'Zix shows up for a gank, but Jax isn't in range to stun Urgot and start fighting him first, Urgot doesn't really have any chance of dying. This is a very important concept in top lane because of how long of a lane it is. So learning how far up in the lane you can be without dying to ganks takes some practice. For a general rule of thumb, you want to be in range to get experience, but not in range for the enemy laner to gap close on you as most junglers won't be able to kill you alone. Anyways, let's move back to the gameplay. Impact continues to play back like this while waiting for his next wave to show up, and Kha'Zix ends up appearing on the ward he placed earlier. Since his lane positioning was so good, this gank doesn't work at all. This is a big deal, as everyone on his team knows where Kha'Zix is now and can play accordingly. This might not mean much to you since your teammates won't even know this happened and won't even look at the map, but this still lets you know where the enemy jungler is for your own safety. Kha'Zix walks away, so Impact goes back to pressuring Jax since Jax is running out of mana after wasting his abilities for the failed gank. Then when Jax walks up for a last hit, Impact dashes in to force Jax to use even more of his mana, then backs off to sustain back up with his corrupting potion. Then a few seconds later, Impact knows Jax is going to go for this cannon minion, so he slows him with his Q, which guarantees he can land his E and make Jax burn the little mana he had left. He crashed this big wave he made on the tower, then starts to recall because he hasn't seen Kha'Zix in a while. But as he's recalling, Nidalee finds him in bot side jungle, so he immediately cancels it. This lets him push the next wave in and pressure Jax for those CS as well, before having to recall as Kha'Zix could be pathing his way now. After recalling, he teleports back to lane right away so he can continue the constant pressure he's been putting out. Jax doesn't match his TP though, and the lane is pushing towards impact right now. So instead of trying to stack up a big wave, he lets it push to him to deny Jax any CS that the blue wave kills. Then as soon as Jax shows up, Impact goes back to missions 1 and 2, poking and thinning the wave with his Q. Jax teleports bot right after that though, so Impact starts to shove the lane as fast as possible to punish that. Even without turret plating, Jax wouldn't benefit that much from this one kill compared to how many minions he's going to lose. And now that turret plating exists, this is even worse for him. Let's see how many waves he loses and how much gold Impact gets. Jax ends up losing 2.5 waves, and Impact gets 320 gold for the plates and almost gets another. This is just the inevitable result of Urgot's mission 3. If Jax TPs like he did here, he loses out in gold from turret plates and minion experience. If he doesn't, he slowly gets poked down until he needs to take a bad recall and TP back to lane, which will still end up in losing turret plates just a little bit slower. Or he'll just overstay and get doped by Impact and his jungler. Pressuring the lane like this is one of the hardest ways to play but it's by far the most effective way of climbing solo queue. So if you're wondering, what is Jack supposed to do about this? It seems like there's no counterplay. Well, this is one of the only times in our videos where you're actually right about this. Urgot counters Jax, meaning if Impact makes zero mistakes, Jax can't win. 
But with that being said, he's going against Impact. In your own games, you will never go against someone who plays the lane this perfect, and there will be plenty of opportunities to win it. For example, after missions 1 and 2 for Jax, when the wave was bouncing back the other way, Impact respected that he wanted to look for mission 3 and backed up not giving him the chance. In your own elo, the odds of them doing this is close to zero, and you should easily be able to score kills here. By the way, we read every single YouTube comment you guys post, so if you have requests for what types of matchups you'd like us to cover that you're struggling with at the moment, definitely let us know. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.